on order the April 10th meeting of the Montpelier Planning Commission. First up to approve the agenda. So I'll take a motion to approve when ready. Thank you, Brian. So moved. Okay, motion from Gabe. Do a second. I'll second. All right, second from Maria. Um, those in favor of approving the agenda say aye. 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 Okay. Agenda approved. Moving forward. Uh, comments from the chair. I don't have, uh, I don't think I have anything um, that's not on the agenda. Um, I guess I do have one question for Mike, which is, uh, uh maybe i'm not remembering but um mike you you had some like zoning suggestion things to to bring um are we going to be doing that soon was my question uh, like, are you is that will that be ready soon yeah it's on my it's on my to-do list to get to to clean that up and get it organized so we can start to have the discussion about getting through the list Okay. Okay. See, oh, okay. So just, okay. The next few weeks then. That was, yeah, that was, was one thing I wasn't sure about. Yeah. We were expecting it. I was expecting to have it for April, but um, I focused on getting these last city plan pieces done before jumping in on the, on the zoning change. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Alrighty. Um, okay. Uh, I don't have anything else. Um, do we have anyone from the public? I don't think so. We just have SE group and planning commissioners and staff. So uh, with no comments from the public or general business, um, we're going to move on to review and approval of final. The agenda, by the way, says review and approval of final web page templates. Um, I know that I have a lot of feedback, so I'm not sure about any final approval for tonight, but um, definitely want to check in on where the historic resources page and the economic development page are at. And so with that, I will turn it over to SC. We have Aiden and Julia here. Yeah, I guess I would just kick off to say our first, uh, so that what we're looking at, we'll obviously take comments that need that you have on them. Really the one of the big things they want is they they went through, we made some templates, we took some comments from you guys you know, a month or two ago. And then we went back and we've really started to put a lot more into, or SE group has Julia and Aiden have put a lot of work into getting it kind of fleshed out. Now we just need to make sure that certainly the template has started to reach what you guys think is okay. We may have wordsmithing, we may have some other things to change, but big picture, if they're going to make 12 of these, we really need to have, you know, some things nailed down that say, yeah, we like how this is structured. We like how the pieces are going together. We like how, you know, but if there's something that's not right, then we really need to know about it now or very soon, because we need to, if we're going to make adjustments to the template, how the overall pictures look, then we need to start having that very, very quickly. So with that, I'll turn it over to Julia and uh, I guess we'll have them run through things really quickly to show you where we're at. And then we'll open it up to comments, I guess. Yes, thank you, thank you. I, I will share my screen really quickly and talk through, um, both our process of where we are, what we have drafted, what we don't have drafted, and how that process has looked over the last six weeks or so while we haven't been present on these meetings. Um, Julia will give a little overview of how we developed the template and where we got to with that. And then we have some questions, but we'd love to hear comments as well. Um, so this spreadsheet that you're looking at here, I'm sorry if it's a little small, on your screen, but we've kept track of what chapters have been drafted by the Planning Commission and Mike, uh, where those are at. 
We do our internal review to kind of fit the structure that we have been working with currently. Um, so some information is removed or sorry, is moved through the document. Um, we then typically have some sort of a data request that includes photos, spatial data, um, any sort of information about partner organizations that we want to incorporate into the document. Um, then Mike reviews where we've gotten to with those text edits and changes. Uh, and then that's put into a draft story map. Um, so we have these two, the historic resources and economic development, uh, which you have seen are the furthest along. And there are some very different stages <laughs> of different story maps. Um, and Mike has reviewed these two or three story maps here. So this is kind of our process diagram and how we've been moving through as these chapters are created. Julia, I will jump to, are there any questions on this before I move? <laughs> okay, great. I will jump to one of the template or uh, one of the story map pages and Julia, go for it. Yeah, um, so there are some similarities to what we've shown before, but I just wanted to give an overview of what's changed and uh, specifically what is a part of this, you know, we're calling a template. And when we say template, um, it basically means that, you know, it's the same headings for the different story maps um, and the same general types of content um, at the beginning, middle and end of this web document. Um, so just from top to bottom, there's this title page. Um, we did reformat that a little bit to make the text more readable um, and consistent across the different um, story maps that we've created thus far. Um, we did change up this introduction a little bit before it was, um, you know, what we were calling bytes, just these like short sentences. Um, but in order to reflect the chapter text that um, this group and, and Mike has drafted, we transitioned back to having um, paragraphs to open um, these story maps um, that are either exactly what's written in the chapter or, or very close um, to the text chapter. Um, and we also added images to this first section to just make it a bit more engaging and break up that text. You wanna go through the headings? Oh yes, uh, thanks Aiden. Mm -hmm. um, there are also five um, consistent headings for each of the story maps. The introduction, background, information, synergies is the section that talks about how this chapter relates to the other chapters in the plan, the aspirations and goals section, and then implementation. And then the implementation section um, is really just a link to um, you know, the document that has those full strategies. They aren't listed um, in full here. We have uh, this infographic, uh, which each story map has an infographic piece just to make sure that we're getting a data snapshot um, and providing, uh, you know, a, a fact that helps orient readers to um, uh, existing conditions in the city. The background section is typically where we're gonna have these maps. Um, and this is the section that's a bit different for each um, chapter because the data is just a bit different. So for this economic development um, section, we have the designated downtown area um, shown on the map for the historic resources. Um, it's uh, point data for historic buildings. And this is one of the sections just because of the um, medium of a story map. Um, this section doesn't correspond to, you know, a specific section of the plan chapter that you this group has written and approved, um, which is a bit different than, you know, the synergies section, for example, which there's um, text right in the story map, or I'm sorry, right in the plan chapter um, about the way this chapter relates to other chapters. 
for this who's involved section, we played around with where this um, was located within the story map template um, to try to make sure that this information was front and center, but also um, wasn't interrupting the flow of the story map. Um, but this section is basically describing um, the different offices, individuals, um, and partners that support um, this particular topic. I have mentioned the synergies already, but um, one thing that we've added for this template um, since this group has looked at the story map is this graphic just showing um, how uh, economic development and each topic relates to other topic areas. So just highlighting those in graphic form as well. We've also just added more images throughout the document in places where um, there is more text, just to break that up. For the aspirations and goals section, um, this there were a couple different formats that we were playing with um, with the previous versions that you saw. And with this version, we have banked the text all on the left um, and played around with the styles of the text to try to make sure that we're clearly separating the aspiration statements and the goal statements. Um, and also just making sure that um, this can be a you know, a very visually pleasing part of the story map that it's not just, um, you know, a bunch of goals listed, but we're also um, trying to show some exciting images and, and pretty images here. And then finally, the implementation section. Um, this is another one that uh, there is going to be some variation from chapter to chapter because certain chapters have um, specific initiatives coming out of them that will that involve you know particular monitoring. Um, so economic development is one of those chapters where there's just a little bit more text in this section. Um, but this implementation section links to the full implementation strategy. Um, and then there's a section or just a little sentence there that says um, that there's previous studies to explore. And then each chapter ends, the template ends with this um, set of three links to the previous or the other plan chapters, previous studies and reports um, and the about the plan section. And if you remember, those um, links will go to the landing page where all of this will live. So that's just an overview on the template. Any questions? Anyone have any questions um, so far about the template? <laughs> what, what were you going to go through first? Just so I know like when an appropriate time to chime in will be. So we had just a couple uh, questions that we had brainstormed, but we can we can take if your feedback is more related to the structure of the template, we can jump into that now. Um, our questions have to do with how people felt about the balance of text and images and other media. Um, and for specifically the background section, those maps, um, if they were intuitive and effective. So those those were our main questions for the for this template. Um, but jump on in, we can get the conversation going. Um, okay, I, I, I'll jump in and then and then anybody else just feel free also to, to do the same. Um, so for the maps, that's one thing um, I look like when you scroll through it, I'm not sure it will be clear to people what each district that's that's kind of lit up like what it is for people um so like so if our goal is to be informative with it i think i'm just imagining that maybe at the same time that the map color changes that some text on there might say what the district is 
something like that. Um, just mm -hmm. to just so that people can can know what they're um, really looking at there, because I I think it it does tell you if you read the box to the side or something, but it it, it doesn't pop out. So mm -hmm. um, you can definitely add a heading or something that makes it clear what you're looking at. Yeah, if it if it if it if it were more like instead of being in the box, because I don't if people's eyes might not be drawn to the box, they might be drawn to the you know to the district that's being highlighted. So if it's Somehow, if there was text like next to that, I feel like that would help people know what they're looking at. Um, and also, like, I don't know if there could be like a t titles or something. I mean, maybe that's what could change is the title or something. I don't know. Um, that, so that was one thing that I had. As far as the template order of things, I did want to have a conversation about whether we think that this is the right order because in in my mind let me pull it up um where do i have it there it is uh okay so yeah so it's introduction then background then synergies then aspirations and goals then implementation um I'm wondering if background is in like things that have been done in the past is um, like we want the, I think, I think that we, the way we talked about this is we want this to be forward looking. We want this to be about, cause it's a, it's the plan for the future. So I do feel like the background as in stuff done in the past type background stuff is too prominent probably. And other planning commissioners, please, um, you know, address that also. Um, and then in the synergies, which is it's good, the synergies as they relate to um, other parts of the plan, I think that's really relevant and that's great. This, but as far as who's involved, like this Montpelier Alive thing, I actually think that that's way too high up because that's Montpelier Alive is not a big part of this plan, and um, it just seems too prominent. And so, like other like entities and things that are related doesn't seem like the focus again so so i'm thinking is the who's involved type stuff better at the bottom the part of it about synergies other chapters great should be higher up background stuff as far as if it's informational background stuff that's really relevant to the goals and the strategies of the plan great i think the map's probably fine where it is for instance but there's, I think as historic resources, we have some background that's, um, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know. I remember something about like, yeah, I, I guess I, I just, I just turned to that one. That one's also in the who's involved in the like discussion of the historic preservation commission and all that stuff. Again, seems like too high up because that's distracting from the plan, which is like, Hey, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're being proactive. Um, so, you know, that's my comments about those sections. And then um, aspirations and goals at the bottom, there's actually on historic resources, I'm not sure if there is a link to the strategies. Um, but in economic development, there is a link, but the link is at the bottom. And um, we do have a lot of people in our town that are interested in diving deep into substance stuff. And I feel like to make this useful for them, we talked about this before, um, to make this really useful for them, giving them much easier, more obvious access to the strategies, which is, you know, the meat of the plan. Um, so I, if, if there could be a way to have a link to the strategies, like the aspirations and the goals and the strategies all together for someone to really dive into that substance, I feel like a link at the top is going, a lot of people in Montpelier will find useful um, and having it because I, the way that I, when I look through this and I, I found it at the bottom, it took me a while to find it. And I'm thinking, I think there's a lot of people who will go to our, this website. If, if this was how it is, they would not be happy because they were looking for a substance and there. They had to scroll through all this, you know, like, oh, okay, I had to read like five paragraphs, seven paragraphs of how people are talking about how great it is. 
before I could actually find what you guys are going to do. So like, I, I feel like that would definitely be feedback we would get. So again, I think, I think having that at the top um, somehow would be important. Um, go ahead, John. You're just muted. muted. Sorry, it's my first time on a remote meeting here. Um, I was just gonna say, like thinking about this though, in the context of the entire plan website, like this will ha they will have like a plan, a plan like landing page that will let people go directly to that the implementation, like those those sort of more direct things, as well as sort of like. I imagine like a map that will have that will have these layer these the various layers and let people dive in. So my I don't know my reaction to it was like I think this is good and that that this all of this is actually background. You know this is like the for people who want to dive in and like go through like what the story is. And you also have you know you can dot like right up front you can go right to those other sections and that since that is a header you can you can like flip through you know this from the right from the beginning like no one is going to start from um any of the chapters right so the intent of this is not that that it is a an entire like it's not a novel you like read through you, it's something you you can interact with so i guess um I don't know. That was my like initial reaction there, where I'm like, I'm fine with more, more of that narrative background stuff. And the order is maybe less important, particularly in these chapters that do like help tell the story. Whereas maybe that initial homepage that is like a little more critical on on how we uh, communicate. Like, what are the what's like the big idea of this plan, and how do people get directly to like some of that implementation stuff? um because there's going to be like what like 10 or 12 of these or something right so um yeah i don't know that was that was just my reaction and then and just like a tiny note on uh any of like the graphics or stuff like that, just to have sort of like make sure we're clear on what the source source data is yep so what i'm hearing john is um you don't think we need to try to have the implementation up higher on these pages because you think that people will have ample opportunity to access that given the whole context of the website that's what you're saying that would be my hope i don't know what it looks like, yeah. like right have right to figure it out but i think yeah. like that, that initial landing page can allow people to dive right into it whereas these it's like you know, less. I, I hope that's right. I mean, my feedback comes from looking at these pages as they are, what's in front of me and reacting. And in that case, it was like, well, if I'm really into historic resources, I'm not, it's hard for me to find how to get really into it. But yeah, maybe, maybe the, that will be resolved um, given the whole thing. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. Later. The vision for the homepage is to have, um, uh, we saw the ribbon, the green, the green ribbon on the previous homepage draft, uh, which will have implementation strategy, which will eventually link to this magical matrix that John is putting together. <laughs> so people will be able to jump um, to that page and then can look at, I'm assuming the strategies for each of the different sections um so yes that that will be incorporated into the landing page i mean the other thing is we have to remember like i'm just thinking of this like what would i be doing i'm going to go in i want to know you know from a developer's perspective where where is the city feel like they want to go i'm probably going to get that through seo not through navigating the website i'm going to go out and i'm going to Google it or whatever, and it's going to give me bring me exactly to the page that I want to go to. So we have to remember there's going to be that too. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what I was thinking along those lines too about just making sure that on these chapter pages that we have good access to it from where wherever you are. That's kind of what you're saying, right? Yeah, I think it's just going to 
come out in the search and it'll be good. Um, a one very nitpicky thing is in the, I think it's economic development page. The two maps are like, one is mauve and the other is coral. <laughs> and I was wondering if there could be a bit more of like a hue distinction between mauve and coral. I think mauve is the, uh, the historical, the downtown and then do you see what I'm talking about? Just like having mm -hmm. a more blatant color distinction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Absolutely. So that was very nitpicky. Uh, I think going back to what Kirby and John were saying, to me, the introduction to both seems to be background. Um, and I wonder, and Mike, I don't know, I mean, you have worked on more plans than we have, but I thought the introduction would have said more about like, this is what this plan is intending to do or like you know this is what we are setting out to do with this plan as opposed to you know Montpelier is made out of stone and brick you know like that's the Montpelier is made out of stone and brick seems to be a, a background or like uh what the percentage of you know private sector jobs are in Montpelier is, is also a background that's just kind of like informing the discussion Whereas I think uh, to me, an introduction to a section would be more about like laying out the point of this, what we are looking to do by it, and maybe just like one or two sentences about what the aspirations are. So someone has like a high level view of what this section is about to do. Then we can go into so, background, you know, be better so informed. Oh, What's I'm, that? I'm sorry. sorry. Um, here's the thing. Yeah. What you're describing exists. And these chapters already had introductions. And so this was part this was too, part of my like feedback also. What do you um, mean chapters already have introductions? We well, so I, I wanted to know like like the thought process SE group had and because the the from what I can tell, the language on these pages right now is like it's 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 a lot of the stuff we provided through our chapter language but it's all like mixed around um and so i was confused too i didn't think the intros were great let me be just flat honest about that but i would do want to read what what it what what it could have been if we just use what's already there so for historic resources the intro that we had provided before was Montpelier's historic resources are important because they connect us with our past. Some resources are from our recent past and visible to all, while others are from indigenous persons thousands of years ago and still buried in the soil. Don't necessarily love that part, but historic markers, buildings, bridges, and districts all represent the story of how we became Montpelier. And it goes on like that. That's what you were thinking, right? For something that sounds like a, um, an intro. Um, but the, I just thought the intro would have more about like what everything that we're about to get into, you know, what the goals are, what the goals of historic development are, or what, the, what are the goals of economic development? Um, just like a very broad brush of like, this is what we want to do with this chapter. This is what is important to us. And then then get into the background. Um, so like a vision statement sort of. Yeah, and just kind mm -hmm. of like introducing what the aspirations are going to be, you know, um, as like a very high level summary. And then I think a lot of what's currently in the introduction could be moved to background. Um, I, I thought, I actually thought it was really, I read through it all <laughs> and I thought it was great. It was very informative. And I liked, you know, after reading it, I it was nice to know all the different parties that are involved, especially with historic development. There's a lot of like different um, agencies going at it. So it was informative, it, but I could see what Kirby means about the introduction just needing to be more of like a high level actual in introduction of the entire chapter, what it's going to say. Okay, I can speak to some of these things, but I would love to hear from other people 
as well if there is any more comment. So you guys saying like it's it's so I see that as like those are context, right? The intro whatever we're calling it, introduction. That's context. Uh like it is background context. So you're saying this is it would almost be like an executive summary ish type right. of intro is what you're saying, Kirk. Yeah. Or what you're what I would expect. Saying. Top lines of here's here's what we're gonna here's what we're proposing. Right. And then give con before we give context, which is what I mean is a plan. The most important part of plan is what we're gonna what we're planning to do. Right. That's what you're saying. Yeah. And th that yeah. What what's there now is um kind of just some random background stuff. It's not um yeah, uh, we can do a lot better. So for the the intro and planning section, what I'm hearing is have a more punchy introduction that covers what people are going to learn about in the somewhat of the background, but also especially the aspirations and goals. Um, why this chapter is is important and what their and what the hope is for the future here. So I think that that's that's doable. Um, for background, uh, to your point, Kirby, we could, if it's just the title background that, you know, it feels like a step back before we really go forward into the goals and aspirations, we could absolutely change that title to like planning context, um, which incorporates some of that intro language as well. Um, it would just- my, my comment just went to, um... A gen generally the language that was chosen there. Um, so again, uh, you know, we provided this chapter language, which um, I had gone through and edited each of these and spent a lot of time doing that. And um, I would advise generally to stick to that more because right now, like, like it, it, those things aren't perfect. I wouldn't claim they are, but they do follow. I think a, a, they, 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 there is a real introduction that that brings you into the topic, and and then it goes into the other relevant parts. And so right now, there's a lot of language in there that provides. It's not an issue with the title, background information. It's an it's a issue of like what was chosen to be included and what wasn't from the materials that we had worked on before. Um, a lot of the stuff that was included focused on like we've done this and we've done that. Um, and, um, you know, we, we put that stuff in the chapter language or, or you know, it's in there. Um, but it, but it seems like more of a focus in the current state of these pages. And, um, I just, you know, I feel like our vision is we want to do some things in Montpelier. We want to, in some cases, do some big new things. And this is, this is everyone in town here is, is when this comes up at city council meetings, it's like the planning commission's rewriting the plan. They're a brand new plan. So if our plan comes out and we have a web page that's just talking all about what we've done in the past, well, we, that means we don't have a big new plan really like in people's eyes. I think it's going to be that, oh, they're just talking about all the stuff that Montpelier's done before. Um, so we want it to be forward looking. We want it to be um, a, about, you know, a vision. Um, so, I mean, I would say, if, you know, look back at the chapter language and use the parts that are about um, looking forward and and um, and that are that stick to what this plan is about, as opposed to the backward looking stuff that's that's what i mean by that so that type of text it wouldn't necessarily come from like the start of the chapter text but it might come from other places but just any language that's in the plan chapter currently that speaks to this forward-looking vision for that topic yeah that I was a good saying... starting place yeah, because I mean, this is from what I could tell, 
comparing the two documents today, looking at them, it, I mean, it looks like you, you did most, like SE mostly pulled from that chapter language, but it was from different places within. And when I was working on that before, the, the, the decisions that you guys made to pull, like what you chose to pull out were things that I would have considered like possibly, possibly thought about cutting back then because I didn't feel like they were, um, the, you know, like what, what we're really trying to, to say and do in this. Um, but I did, I mean, I compared the intros though, and I do feel like the intros that are already existing in the chapter language are quite a bit better. Um, so that was one place. Uh, and then when it came to re referencing other like background context stuff, like wanted to be about like what the forward views of the plan are as opposed to um, focusing on what was done before. Yeah. Okay. So just to that last point there confused me a little bit. For the background, you want to look at when I when I said background, I don't mean the background section. I mean just that when you've been because there's all of these sections on the web page right now reference or have some background info. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. just all I mean. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Sorry to, sorry to bust in sounding so crumpy, but, um, you're fine. I just wanted to clarify that, um, for your comment about who's involved, that's definitely a section that didn't easily fit, uh, in, in many sections. We think it's important. I think, um, politically to kind of speak to who else is doing work in this area and to not drop that information. It is some, in some chapters, there's quite a bit of that. Um, we could explore moving it to the implementation section as, you know, who's bringing this forward um, and also include a reference to some previous work. Um, but I I understand it kind of breaks up the the flow and and you know it's just another thing to read before people get to the exciting goals and aspirations. So there is some movement there, but part of the reason why it was included is definitely for that that political cover. I think um, I I think it makes sense in implementation, yeah. And and if implementation stays, you know, at the bottom, um, then it makes sense there. I think, yeah. It makes a lot more sense as implementation than it does synergies or something like which I think is what it's currently under. Yeah, it's right before synergies, but it's in that same area. So visually it can be connected to that. Um, Julia, what do you think about that movement? I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, I second what Aiden said about uh, making sure that we just highlight those folks who are going to be implementing some phases of this. Um, and have already been involved. Um, but yeah, I think implementation is a great spot for that. I think in general, by the way, there's, I mean, there's so many people involved in, in this stuff in our community that we're not going to give all the kudos that actually we probably should. So um, I got, so I'm not, I'm not that worried about trying to throw up credit because if, if we did, then we would need a lot more, I think, um, For the Montpelier Alive section of the economic development, I agree that photo really makes it seem like it's a big player. Um, happy to drop the photo or if we have other organizations that we want to add to that and just show. I didn't I didn't know if we wanted to add Caledonia Spirits or Timber Homes Vermont or something to that list. So I'll just Go yeah, no, I don't think we, there. I don't think we, we probably don't want to use city resources to market for private companies. Yeah, I would yeah think. absolutely. <laughs> Does anybody else have um, feedback about any of the stuff they saw? Well, are we getting into the content yet? Or is this just, are we supposed to be reviewing the content? I mean, I started uh, getting the content a little bit, so. Mike has reviewed the the content, um, and that's part of the process that Aiden showed there. Um, so that's just to make sure that 
you know, the judgment calls that we're making about um, the different texts that we're using from the chapter and are condensing still it remains accurate. So. Um, the one heading or the one goal, I guess, that caught me off guard was in economic development, the first aspiration that Montpelier will be a great place for people in the workforce to live. Um, that's, and maybe I'm just not used to like talking about economic development topics, um, but limiting it to the people in the workforce, you want them to have a nice place to live. But like, of course we want people throughout Montpelier <laughs> to have a nice place to live. And is that just because this is the economic development section that we're just focusing on? You want the workforce to be happy? Yeah, I mean, there's going to be housing chapters. The work, the we divided economic development into two chapters. One, you know, if you want to go back to the classics, um, discussing the labor force, so yeah. the workers. Um, a lot of times, economic development. If you look at an economic development plan or an EDSP, a lot of it will focus almost entirely on the business side. Um, what can we do to encourage and work with business and business owners and that whole side. And there's very little discussion of, well, what about the workers? Um, you know, economic development is more than just the people who own the businesses. It's also about the people that work at the businesses. So um, we split economic development into two aspirations. One that talks about what can we do to make it a great place to, you know, be a worker, to be a member of the workforce. And that involves according to this plan, focusing on three things, uh, transportation, child care, and housing. Um, those are the three major barriers to people entering the workforce and staying in the workforce um, is the ability to get to work, to have child care, and to have a place to live. Um, and then the other half is talking about the business side of things. What can we do to help bring Caledonia spirits to Montpelier, to bring timber homes to Montpelier, to... Um, you know, make sure we don't have a lot of vacancies in our downtown, you know, how how do we get more, you know, remove those vacancies in our downtown and those types of things. And that's focusing on business strategies, tax stabilizations, uh, downtown designation program, uh, all those types of features. So we that's why it talks about making Montpelier a great place to basically be a member of the workforce. And maybe it needs to be written better to kind of get that point across. So yeah, the, to, I just want to I just want to piggyback on the context that for Mike though the, our process in developing it was um, the planning commission decided to split this into workforce and then business needs as two different things and we wanted to make workforce prominent and the first draft of the aspiration was a really long it, it I, like I, I like when you said what you said Maria like I was like I see that immediately where it's like oh unfortunate phrasing. That's because that used to be a lot longer where it was in context and now it's not. And so now it does read the way that you said, so we might need to rethink that, but, but, you know, that was a planning commission decision to do that, but that does dovetail into some feedback I would have for SC, mm -hmm. which is about things from our chapter language to focus on and planning commissioners, please like, you know, if you don't think this, this is the direction, but my takeaway from what we did on that chapter was we wanted to make a big part of our plan can, when it came to economic development about connecting people to their needs, workers to their needs. And we have language in there about that. And, it, and we also drew a big connection between housing and workers and so right now the current state of it is there's a lot of bragging in the web page about how montpelier has all these jobs and we have more jobs than people but for us that was that was in our chapter language not because we wanted to celebrate and pat montpelier on the back it was about kind of connecting it to hey we're we have more jobs than we have residents because we're not providing housing we wanted to have a connection between other you know and that that is in there in the in the website language but it's but i mean my takeaways from what that chapter a lot of what that chapter was about was connecting workers to the things they need um we didn't even we didn't even i don't think we even talked about education as one of them we had we talked about child care we talked about 
transportation and the other stuff. So I don't know if it, like, I feel like that was the vision that was there, at least for the, at least for that first aspiration. Um, if that gives you context of what I would expect and less about how we're great because we have all these jobs, like connecting that to, um, again, connecting that to the plan about what we are trying to do moving forward, we're going to probably still have the jobs, but how about having, you know, more of the people in those jobs be able to live where they work and, um, you know, that kind of stuff being the language of like what we would, I, I thought that we were expecting to see um, with the chapter. Kirby. I think uh, as we reword introductions to really show that vision for the chapter, I think that's a really great thing to focus on here. Um, and if there's other opportunities within the planning context or the background section, whatever we end up calling it, that we can also make that relationship stronger. Yeah. And, it, and it, is there anything else, anyone else who was here when we worked on economic development that you that stands out about, you know, some of the important values we were trying to make sure were included in the plan. Anybody else have anything that comes to mind or, or for the historic resources, either one? I think it's good to, to have like fresh eyes, like Maria's on these because this was like designed by committee and you can imagine like things getting whittled down to a point where something may just look awkward, but you don't realize it because we were just hacking away at something completely different. And then the, the problem then we were trying to solve. something sounding really awkward or Yeah, it was it was way too long. So we were trying to solve that problem. Then we, we shortened it and we were happy that it was nice and short, but then it sounds like we think only workers matter, <laughs> which is not the goal. <laughs> Should uh should we should I don't know what the process would be for us to to change the wording of that aspiration if we would need to vote. Um, but maybe it's something we can put a pin in. But we sh we should formally change the wording so that we're saying the same thing in a short way, but not phrasing it in a way that we're trying to exclude people who aren't working. Anybody have anything else? Or SE, did you have more questions for us about um, clarifications? I think we just wanted to listen yeah. to what people's reactions were. And um seems like we've gotten some great clarity on both some wordsmithing and some template movement, which is which is helpful as we go into refining these and making the other chapters. So if there, I think Mike and Julie and I will have a meeting on Thursday. So if there's other comments uh, or anything shakes loose over the next few days, uh, we can, you know, send that to Mike and we can discuss internally, but I think this has been, this has been great. So thank you everyone for taking the time to look at these um, both in detail and more broadly. I think the key is to make sure we're getting places, getting close on the on the template itself. We can always send these back to you. Um, it doesn't take much time, I, I think, for them to go through and adjust. You know, if we wanted to reword that opening paragraph, that's just switching out text. But for them to be able to develop all twelve chapters, they need to know this is what the opening. And and your your input, Kirby, was helpful to just go and say try try just taking the opening paragraph and plugging that in and and just try to use the opening paragraph as, as the opening statement um, before we move into what is labeled now as background that maybe is planned context where we try to really compress what we're trying to say. And that's, that's really a lot of what we've been talking about. And I've been trying to say is we're trying to tell a story. This is a storyboard. We're trying to tell a story. What's the story we want to tell? Because we're not going to have a lot of words. We're not going to have a lot of whatever to be able to do that so we really need to know exactly what we want to say so we can say it in as concise a way through the 
plan context, which are mostly in those map formats. Um, so we can then move out of that into the synergies. How does what we just talked about relate to other chapters? And then it moves into the goals, policies, and aspirations, which is just a summary of what's in those tables that'll be in the other pages. And then we would have who's involved, assuming that gets moved all the way to the bottom and says, all right, well, who's who's actually going to be in charge of making this happen? Um, and then we know, okay, now we've got an order. Now we know what we're doing. We can always go back and adjust how we've talked about housing in the economic development synergy section. We haven't captured that. that. Those are easy changes that we can make between any time between now and when we hand it off to city council. But what we can't do is start moving things up and down because then we've got to move it up and down for 12 other chapters. So if we think we're starting to get pretty close in that template, then I can work with uh, Julia and Aiden and we can try to hammer this out. And we'll try to send these things out. If we get a close chapter, we'll send it back out to you guys. And then you guys can really nitpick on the words. Um, you know, so, we like this yeah. word, we like that word. So so, so about, about that, I mean, oh, I'd like to know other people's thoughts. I mean, one thing that I'm considering is um, delegating to planning commissioners, you know, down the road to really go at the language you know and and um you know we have our we have our chapter language that we've drafted and we have more importantly our aspirations goals and strategies and just really to see like if we can get at the heart of these chapters so, so, um is that something you guys think that we might want to plan to do later is just have like i'm thinking like i don't know go in pairs and then each pair has a couple of chapters they look at you know, and go through and really like just write it, basically. Well, hopefully it's mostly written because that's what we've been doing. Um, my concern about breaking them into pairs is we also want to have a uniform voice as we go through it. And if we have two chapters mm -hmm. that are written by Kirby and two rat chapters that are written by Gabe, it's not to say one's better, one's worse. They're just not going to have a uniform voice, which is what we're trying to do. Yeah. Consistent voice. Yeah, I know. I, I thought of I thought of that too. I mean, it's just the the problem that's in front of us is like SE wasn't there for the context of all of the discussions, and so we need to make. And since we we're not taking just the chapter language that we all agreed on, uh, we're we're doing a shorter version of it. I don't know. Just figure out whatever the right process for that, so that the so that the real intent and the real vision shines through um if we don't delegate i don't know maybe we could um we could do it ad hoc as they come in i'm a little concerned about putting off the language though like you're talking about mike like too much because then we're going to get busy we're going to do other stuff and we're gonna maybe have an inferior product um i don't want don't want that because we have a lot of high hopes for this web page we can continue to think about about how we're going to deal with the language stuff um i did have one more structural thing and there's been a few structural things in this conversation it's not just been worth anything obviously yeah um, the under each of the aspirations and goals on these pages we have a description which was a description that mike drafted and i don't think we ever like edited so um, I'm not sure if those like the way like like it was uh, it was presented in a way in the chapter language that that was like not prominent. But the way that this is put together right now, those descriptions of what the aspirations mean are quite prominent. I even think that people will read them thinking that those are part of the aspiration that they basically have the same legal force, so to speak, as uh, as the aspirations. And so if we're going to have the descriptions, I think we need to review those to make sure that that's what we were all thinking when we came up with that aspiration, like, like, like do some more scrutiny with those. Or alternatively, not have descriptions, which comes with, you know, its own cons. Um, 
and I can pull these up to give you guys an example if you want, if people are confused. No, I, um, I think you're right. Uh, I think if we, we shouldn't, and, and we have in, in the storyboards, restated the aspirations. And I think you're right. Um, restating them is probably, we should be careful about doing that because people will assume the restated aspiration is the aspiration because, well, I read the historic resources plan and that's the aspiration. It says it right there. Well, it's not. That's actually a restating of what the actual aspiration is, which is in the in the plan, which is different. And I think well, we what, should. What I was, sure. what I was talking about, like I, I see what you're saying, but but what I was saying about was, um, if you look at the historic resources page, and then click on aspirations and goals and go straight down to aspirations and goals, it it tells the aspiration, which is the aspiration that we've passed out so far, and the goal, which is um, the goal that we that we passed. But then under that, there's additional language that says, uh, so for the first one, Montpelier, the aspiration is Montpelier will strive to be a community that understands, appreciates, and preserves our historic resources. Goal, address gaps in Montpelier's knowledge and records of our historic resources. And then the description language of what that means is um, it's fine, and it was fine as an example of ways to address gaps in Montpelier's knowledge. But it has like some suggestion type sounding things when it's when it's when it's set up the way it is now. I don't think this was a problem before, but when it's set up now, it says there are some neighborhoods where additional historic districts may be appropriate, such as the Meadow, College Street, Pioneer Street. So now we're in a place, I feel like, with it being so prominent that in the future, someone who wants to stop development on Pioneer Street or whatever is going to say the city plan calls for this to be a historic district. You can't do this. And like that's not the planning commission's was the planning commission's intent there. Um, so that's what I mean about making sure that we have descriptions that match our intent. What do planning commissioners think? We should be cautious of making like perfect the enemy of good enough. Um, we need to get this plan done. But I well, think not, I mean, yeah, it's it's not much effort to remove these descriptions. I'm not making perfect enemy of the good enough. I mean, it's it's a simple thing. Go, Maria. You're muted. I'm muted. Um, so as like a person on the outside reading this for the first time, um, the goal and the description don't necessarily seem related to me. Um, I thought the goal was to, uh, this one, address gaps in knowledge and resources. And then the description is not about, you know, going back to read on my computer, addressing gaps in our knowledge. Um, it's kind of, I don't, the description seems to be like, what else we could be doing to preserve our historic structures? Um, but I don't know that it's about addressing gaps in our knowledge. I do oh. think this inventorying and mapping piece does speak to that. Um, this addressing gaps in knowledge, I think is about where um, the historic resources are, that's part of it. Um, so I, I do think it speaks to that, but it is in the second sentence here, not the first sentence, so. So is yeah, it but... saying Montpelier, do you mean like the city's knowledge or the people of Montpelier's knowledge? The city's okay. knowledge. It's, so yeah, I mean, I think the intent was to go to for us to learn more about some of these things so that i feel like the description should be have a neutral tone that's not um ag again this is not like like i think mike drafted this for the chapter originally and this was like what mike thought would be some good examples of this kind of thing to help somebody kind of get it which is good but i think if we're going to have it in a prominent place then the examples could be taken a lot more with a lot more weight than intended 
So just, just making it more neutral, just there are some neighborhoods where, uh, or even Montpelier could add or remove some historic districts, like keeping it neutral where either one is, could be, could be the case, um, you know, based on, you know, and then, or, and then for the other one, that, that one's, um, I think mostly fine. Um, but a, a bit more neutrally phrased, like Montpelier could, could create an inventory of, um, whatever that said, uh, and then, you know, Montpelier could survey, I don't know, I think, I think just, just more neutral so that those things aren't taken as, um, it's it's pretty prominent on here. I feel like people will take those as like our main priorities or something, and that's not the intent. Maybe that first sentence could be dropped to under, you know, so that we're going to inventory and map out uh, individual structures and then do a survey of arche archaeological sensitive areas. And then, you know, if um, appropriate, there may be some more historic districts, if appropriate based on what we've just learned through the surveying and mapping, you know, kind of make it seem related to. Yeah, put, um, them in, put them in the correct order that we would be doing them. Yeah, I think that's what, that's what you're thinking, right? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I mean, the goal, it. the goal of the historic resources is to understand our resources. Yeah to get the community to appreciate them and then to have strategies that help us preserve them. Right. And so this is just meeting the first of our, our three aspirations, which is there's so much that we don't know. Um, you know, we know a lot about our, our national register historic district. That's great. We know everything about our downtown, but we don't know anything about anything that's around our downtown. And we don't know anything about our archeological resources. We don't know anything about where, where are the Abenaki sites we don't know uh we haven't even looked for them we haven't even tried to look for them so you know these are all the things we don't know there's a lot we know in the downtown but there's a lot we don't know and that's what the first goal is trying to get at and the second one is and, and this is a little bit for the benefit of of those of you who weren't here before there's been a lot of proposals to protect our historic resources in our downtown and around our downtown. And every time the planning commission has proposed or the historic preservation commission has tried to propose something, it gets bombed out. It gets shelled. And what Eric Gilbertson and the historic preservation commission basically have come up and said is as long as this community does not appreciate the historic resources, they're never going to vote to protect it. We're always going to have our historic buildings getting torn down because people just don't understand how valuable these resources are. So that's that it, you know, from the Historic Preservation Commission, you know, we've got to understand it. We've got to get the community to start to appreciate it. And that's, a, you know, two different strategy sets of strategies before we can really do an effective job at preserving it, which are sometimes regulations and sometimes programs to give people money to help them take care of the buildings. There are a lot of different ways of preserving it. That's the third piece. How do we protect it once people appreciate it? So that's what, that's really the story we're trying to tell here is, you know, here's what we know, here's what we don't know. And this is what we're going to do to learn more. This is what we're going to do more to get the community to appreciate it. And this is what we're going to propose to help preserve and protect them going forward. So my general feedback about this for SE was, um, I can see the point of having these descriptions on the page like this, but I would ask that you uh, make like make sure it's neutral sounding and that it's not suggesting specific things. If we want specific things, that's going to be in the strategies. Like, um, we don't want to accidentally. I mean, I, I definitely have my lawyer hat on here, but this is real in this in the town we live in. This is real. People will take this and they'll use it. They'll try to use it. Um, so just um, neutral, um, you like give give the examples, but make them like neutral of like um, if you could scroll down a little bit, just you know, like like we just discussed with this one. Um, each of the three sentences can be kind of shortened, and and they'll give you the gist of what that aspirational goal means without sounding like it's suggesting a specific action unless unless we've really called out that action but 
I think I think you get it, but um, I understand what you're saying about making this more neutral. I do think just um, as an educational tool for the public about the plan, and since you have done so much work already to identify what those strategies are going to be, um, I think just in terms of um, using this as an opportunity to share that with people in an accessible way, uh, this description could be replaced with just a bulleted list of these are three strategies that relate to this goal. And that, that would be great. This, um, I, I think that could be great. Okay. Potentially. Okay. I mean, it, 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 of course, devils in the details. We'd have to see how it like looks and sure. reads. But, um, I think that could be great if you um, wanted to take that approach. Do other people I mean, that, would, that would probably have to take out the implementation, the implementation. So the aspirations and goals, we're trying to explain what are the aspirations and goals. Um, implementation was trying to give a summary of the strategy. So if we were to kind of merge these together, that may mean implementation either goes away um, or otherwise gets it gets adjusted as well. well. Well, currently we're the implementation sections from what I have seen only link to strategies. They're not actually there in any way on that on this page. That's correct. Um, I, you know, we don't necessarily need to do that, though. Um, we don't need to, we don't need to ha have strategies. If I think if, if SE is like looking to redo these descriptions, though, looking at the corresponding strategies is a good way to get info about what we're getting at. This goal, this goal is going to have some strategies that tell you specifically how we want to meet the goal. Yeah, I do think it's possible to just retitle this aspiration goals and strategies and then say selected strategies or, or you know, um, summary of strategies and list some of them and then say for the full strategies link, like click the link in the implementation section below or link directly here. I, that is one option. And we could change the title to implementation summary and then it's an indication it's not really intended to have all of the strategies if we just call it implementation summary um i mean one thought here is that when when we when we throw around the terms aspirations and goals i mean i, I know on the landing page we explain that but yeah. we're but on each of these pages, we're not. I'm just a little wary of people looking at this without looking at the other page and not knowing. I mean, I don't know. I don't think we need to lean on the that lingo too much. Um, what are, what are other people's thoughts about whether we have a description here or? give some strategies as examples. I mean, I found it to be pretty benign, but I don't have the context that other people on this call have for the context for the original development. I, I mean, we use the word may in there. I feel like the people that are going to use are going to weaponize any part of the plan are going to find ways to weaponize parts of the plan. Yeah, well, I, I, I should I should clarify my comments about that. I mean, it, it's that's not the only. It's it's just just misunderstanding in general is a concern. Not not just the weaponizing. I'm sorry, Brian. Go ahead. No, no, no. I would just that's that's just I don't I don't I don't know how much distance there is between what you guys originally said as the goal versus you know what what this is saying I, I feel like this is meant to be kind of a snapshot of but you don't want to do a disservice to what you're what you guys articulated as goals certainly but it needs to be um I don't know, this seems fairly approachable i don't know what the word is approachable or or I, I, it's easy to process what what you're saying here i i think anytime you talk about adding or removing historic districts either way uh, that's going to be i could see how that could be volatile um but you could you, i guess you could smooth that out by not naming specific areas of town 
if that's what you're you're looking to kind of smooth it out a bit here and not make it but i i kind of like the way this flows i mean the implementation stuff is the deeper dive right that is the more detailed that is i mean i'm not saying none, the, the goals and aspirations aren't detailed too but it's this makes it very approachable it seems to flow right to me but again i don't have the context for you know there being a lot of distance between what you guys had decided in all your conversations and what this snapshot shows yeah i i actually am i'm with you um that yeah i don't think we need to list the strategies honestly i just i feel like and, and the descriptions i think actually are useful as brian's saying um i just want to yeah edit them down a bit and make them more neutral when we do it and 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 don't name specific entities or streets or neighborhoods when we do that. That's that's really the, the gist of my feedback on it. Is everybody else okay with sure. that approach to the descriptions? Yeah, and yeah, I, I definitely don't. No. no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say I sh I have the same concern that you do, Kirby. So I I think what you laid out sounds like a good strategy. I was just gonna say I do I love that I, I really like the templates I like the, the maps I like uh, I like the synergy graphic that well it's helpful for someone like me who wants to understand how it's all interconnected with all the 12 chapters or some of the 12 chapters and I like the how dynamic the, the pictures are it's interesting I mean it's not just which is the goal right not to make it some static thing that's boring to scroll through so I, I mean I I think the template looks great I know there's certainly some editing to do here but I'm I'm impressed. So I, um, as fresh eyes on it, I, I, and I really like to do like the maps on the storyboard with the, I agree with labeling them as much as possible without making them too busy, but I, it's, it was, it was very educational for me. Let's put it that way. Thanks, Brian. And thanks Kirby and Maria and Arion for the um, discussion on the, description here agreed to make sure we're not getting into any hot water or confusing people in any way. So that all you makes want to sense. Roll the, oh, I was going to say, do you want to roll down to implementation and see if there was sure. stuff we wanted to keep on? So we kind of touched on the goals. Oh, that one doesn't have anything. The other one did. Right. Th that's right. Yeah. So did you guys, is, so if you looked between the economic development and historic, they some of them have a description of implementation and some of them just have a have a link. Um, did you want any? Well, I guess if we had some mention of strategies, we would move them up into the implementation summary. I guess we'll just take take them on a case by case and see. Yeah, I think you know we're trying to um make sure that the uh chapter text that was related to imp implementation appears here but um there were some chapters where there wasn't um that type of text um so i think we can try to add some sort of description certainly about like what is in this link why somebody might visit it um without trying to you know create a whole new description that isn't something that this group has reviewed. Some of the movement on who's involved might yes. end up right. in this section as well. Yes. Yeah, this one had, this chapter that we wrote did have stuff on implementation. Okay. But it talked about that's where the context for the who is doing it. So actually, if you look at what was in our written implementation, it starts with the city has an appointed historic preservation commission. Oh, great. Has the CLG has the um, the the um, capital complex commission. Perfect. Great. Yep, and then finally, the city has a two-pronged approach to preservation of historic buildings, blah, blah, blah. So there is is a little bit in there. 
I think that's that. just exactly what's in the, or or very similar to what's in this. Who's involved? So. Yep that that, that first paragraph was first paragraph was moved up, and then the second two paragraph outreach to the public. Blah blah blah. So. Yeah, I don't know if we need that. If we just focus on the aspirations and goals and then tell people, you know, we can put a summary of the types of tools. But in some cases, there's a lot of them. So I don't know how we would necessarily break them down. Historic is easy. There's only 11. But other <laughs> chapters have as many as 60. So. Right. So we can keep the focus on aspirations and goals and then just reference implementation, which of course now would have who's involved. Yep. Um, I would I <laughs> I wish there was a way to summarize the implementation strategies, you know, well, because yeah. If I was a person going to this website, I think that would be like the one thing that I would want to see was like, what are they going to do, right? Like that's that's like the question of the hour, I think, if anyone's actually looking at this page. So that's, that's that's also, <laughs> yeah, so I'm talking about having a link at the top of the page. Um, um, so I think by the time like you've gone through all this and you've seen like the goals and then you get to implementation, like you want to see something, you know, like. Um, and so and I, I appreciate how, how difficult it is with how many different strategies there are. I think most of the chapters that we've written have a fairly good summary. It doesn't talk about every strategy. It really tries to group them into themes and topics of these are the types of things that we will look at and the specific details are here. And there, it wouldn't, it's not an all-inclusive list of everything, especially lower priority items have been taken off, but it may just focus on these are the three big things we want to do. Okay. Um, and so I can go through and make sure we've got, you know, a, a two sentence piece to plug into each of those. And I think they're probably already in most of these chapters that we wrote. Um, we'll just have to go through and make sure there's a quick summary that helps people understand. All right, what are we going to do about it? And for all the details, click here. Um, because when you get to that thing that, you know, the, the, the spreadsheet it's it's not as clear it's it's a pretty clunky <clears throat> um a piece that's there once once people want to get to that implementation sheet it's going to be it's not going to be as straightforward although i think we're going to have one that's straightforward i mean we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the legal advice we got and one of the legal recommendations is we're going to have to ha have a way that we can especially with the implementation strategy have it be downloadable to a pdf and so for a number of people they may rather than go through the 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 widget that john has has thought up um Wait, so is this what you are calling that what you're saying is going to be clunky mike i'm not going to make it clunky <laughs> <laughs> it's well it's not as it's not it's not like opening a pdf which is just going to list them right out for you you have to go through kind of a searchable function to kind of get you what you're looking for. It'll be Unless way better not. than a PDF. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do want to, I want to get Mike's back on this though. And that like, there's another thing too, that people, different people have different brains and like they want to look at inform or digest information in different ways. So John's thing is going to be really cool, but also just a plain old list that can be Thank printed you, on Kirby. a piece of paper. <laughs> I, I, I like John's be thing. Cool. I want to use John's thing. I but just some, know the right. people who are going to knock on my door are going to be like, yeah. I don't help me get this. I don't get this. Right. And then but some people would prefer it just to just to be an old fashioned list on a piece of paper. And it's since we legally should do that. <laughs> well, I think the uh I think Maria's right though. We want to articulate the action. I mean or memorialize all the action at the you know so i like the summary stuff at the end. i mean it's basically like aspirations like deep thinking goals are the concrete goals and then here's the action uh we're not just you know sitting around deep thinking deep thoughts we actually have a plan and then kirby do you is your so the ribbon that's below the let's say the intro graphic at the top that has the title of the chapter and then the implementation i mean there's those things along the ribbon 
uh, you know, introduction background, blah, blah, blah. And then implementation is right there. That would take you right down, obviously, to the same page on the same page, but then you would be to the link. So you, you're saying you want it even more accessible that. than that? Yeah, like like something that, that just plainly says link, you know, click here to go directly to the implementation um, strategies yeah. for this chapter. Um, I, you know, if, but, but I'm not, I mean, I'm not dead set on, on that. What I'm, what I continue to be insistent upon though, is that people who are here for that reason can easily find that stuff and navigate it. And if it works that we have that link on the landing page and we, and we have it accessible, um, that's fine. I just want to make sure that those people are being catered to also because the, you know, that these, these chapter page, these web pages for each chapter that we have right now are more oriented towards the more casual user. Just want to make sure that we're, you know, getting everybody. Um, so that's, that's my concern about that. And I also just, I, I don't know, I'm just like a big into, I have strong feelings about good government and good government is transparent and getting to the important legal info is, should be easy, not hard. You know. Um, I can just write as we end here, I can just show again what the just reminder for folks of what we're hoping is people's first um first thing they click on when they Google Montpelier City Plan. And we're seeing this implementation right here would open. Right now it just goes to this landing page, but we're hoping to embed John's things <laughs> into this page here. Um, and if there is a PDF that's created, that, that link could also be embedded here. So people could explore it in a more interactive way or just download a PDF that has a plain old list and you know 200 strategies if they want to absorb it that way. So we're hoping that that's how people get to this. If people do want to dig into the nitty gritty plan chapters, um, there are two, two, there are some linked here, which then would take you through that link tree that we just walked through on those pages. So we're, we are absolutely trying to strike that balance of catering to the casual user or someone who needs the city plan for research in the future and who wants to really dig in and see what's going to be done over the next couple of years. So that's how it's currently set up. If that gives any more information and context. Um, but you're right, Kirby, that if you do go to these pages, you have to click here and then follow this link and it'll eventually take you back to that first page. So it is a little strange. Not, not everyone will know what implementation means, what we mean by that. I don't, it's not like a common enough, you know, it's not going to be entirely to people. So that was not, that's another reason why just having some link that's labeled as very plainly link to the strategies um, or link to, I don't, I mean, yeah. So it could be like implementation strategies shows up here uh, and here as well. So people are understanding that it's, more than the goals and the aspirations. Um, yeah, I think so. It's almost like I, it's a like hard for me to answer because I'm not sure how other people are going to interpret it. Um, but just wanting to make sure that, yeah, that, that they know what it means to get. Because there will be people who are like, well, I know that this plan has specific actions they plan to do and that's what i'm trying to find i don't know right. what all the words mean but i'm gonna that's what i'm looking for so yeah. as long as our you know process gets them there right and that reminds me of another process point that i was going to just recap with this group at the beginning um is that our our next steps as this website is drafted is that there will be a review committee uh or a couple volunteers that we ask to sort of do do what we're saying, go through, experience the website as 
a lay person and give us feedback on what makes sense, what's intuitive, what doesn't make sense. So this group's feedback is super important, but you're also very involved um, in this sort of work. So having um, just sort of the average Joe look at this as well uh, is part of the process. Yeah, that's great. Um. Okie dokie. Well, I know that this group has other things on the agenda today. Thank you uh, so much for your time and feedback and thoughts. Again, uh, Julie and I have a meeting with Mike on Thursday. So if there's anything that comes to mind in the next few days, please send it over. Um, thank you both so much. Um, don't take my grumpiness as too much of, of a disheartening thing. Um, <laughs> I'm just, I'm no, trying on the, I don't know. Maybe I've been watching too much Secession, maybe. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, All good. I didn't drop any F-bombs on you, so. <laughs> Went pretty well. No, we have other people and other plans that are like, I'm so sorry to give this feedback. Um, it was, it was great. And I just want to add this one thing. And you're like, don't, don't apologize. Like, it's all good. That's what we're here for. So no worries whatsoever. Very helpful. One quick Thank question you. before mm -hmm. we move on. Um, do you, in terms of like photos and graphics and stuff, do you have enough stuff? And if not, because I know it can be like hard to pull some of those, and especially with like uh, photos of like people sometimes, like some kind of people like really bring things to life, and it's hard just to get photos of people. But like as a planning commission, we're we can provide you with photos of people in Montpelier because we are people, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, mine will will probably have too many photos of like some very small children running around. There, but uh, so I was just bringing that up to ask if you need any, and if so, I would I guess I would ask the rest of the planning commission, hey, if we have any nice photos of the city that we'd be willing to show up in the plan, can we just send them over? That's a great idea. Yeah, we do have um, lots of photos, but we can also always use more. Um, this platform is really dependent on having lots of photos, high quality photos. Um, yeah, Mike's done a great job. And, getting us some thus far, but maybe we can um, create a folder and then uh, the planning commission can add their photos to that folder. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds yeah, especially good. As, um, especially is, as we start yeah. moving forward, we can always go through and, and have, one, once we start to get close, it's very easy to go through and say, I think we could do a better job with that picture and find, and then it's plug and play. It's just switch one out. That's not, those aren't a lot of work to be able to do after we've got a pretty good plan to go through and say that one picture just is taking away from the rest of the story. So let's find a better picture and we can switch those out. But they do have access to all the Montpelier Alive photos, which is a, an extensive library, as well as Montpelier had a library that of photos that had been developed when we did the website in 2018. So we've got a number of photos there as well. But yes, I agree with John. If there's... Um, photos that you have that you that you've got that you think are great you can pass them along with face masks are we just pretending the pandemic never happened <laughs> <laughs> everything is from 2018 mm -hmm. things will look like a bit different we might also have would, would cell phone quality specific. would cell would cell phone quality pictures be helpful for you though i think that's important uh, like, yeah I, I think you know that's high enough um, they don't, they probably won't be the uh, large, largest photos on the screen, but, you know, if we're looking for a very specific photo of like, oh, this is somebody in a crosswalk, and you have that type of photo, just as an example, you know, that's a great photo that could be an inset. Okay. Yep. Thanks so much for all your feedback this evening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, SC Group. Anyone have anything else for them before we let them go? Okay, you're off the hook. Thank you. Thanks. See you Wednesday or Thursday. Um, we actually only have one little thing, which is to consider the minutes from March 27. Uh, 
so I, I'll mention because we've got a second that you know I did finish the public safety chapter. So um, Kirby, I know you sometimes like to go through and do a quick um, run through before we take it to the planning commission. So that one, that chapter is ready. If you want to read through it, we can get it on an agenda to to approve that. Um, I did send out the legal opinion from David Rue. He is okay with us in our um, pursuit of making a web-based plan. <clears throat> Good for us, considering we've already spent so much time and money working on it. Um, but at a certain point, we felt we had to make sure we had a legal opinion because someone's going to push us. And he said, yeah, it's fine. And you saw a few of his qualifiers that he was concerned, just making sure we've got easily um, uh, PDF'd. Uh, items so that way it can get uh, go through legal review and we've got a way of it's it has to be a fixed document that you know we can't have items that that update and those types of pieces so we're good with how we've set this up um, and then the last uh, update I wanted to give I've been working with the regional planning commission on um, I'm now on the regional plan committee and they are they mentioned that the state is going to be coming through with some rules on land use plans, I guess. Uh, and I don't know if, John, if you know anything about this, they're trying to come up with a consistent format for towns in um, coming up with land use plans. So that way, if you knit them together, you'll have more, a little bit more consistency between the various um, communities. So uh, we don't have that guidance yet, but fortunately, we haven't started our land use plan, but apparently there's going to be some guidance that's coming out. It was supposed to have come out a couple of weeks ago. Um, so they, the Regional Planning Commission expects it to come out soon. So uh, we'll be able to use that guidance to help us lay out our land use plan in a way that the state is hoping that we do. Is this, uh, what What agency is this? Like ACCD? And they're, yep. they're putting out some regs or what? I don't think any. I don't think it'll be anything like required or regulatory. I think they're just trying to paint the statewide picture and having a challenge doing so. So it'll be a more guidance. Same thing for the zoning atlas project, which is a national one. But um, there's an effort for folks to knit that into a statewide one for Vermont. Um, but um, but yeah, I, I don't think any of those things are anything that we need to spend too much time thinking about right now. It's more about how do we just translate it and do you know, whatever whatever standards they they pick. Okay. Yeah, some some places used to just grab their zoning map and put it in. Some of them, some communities would just go in and kind of make a, a dumbed down version of their zoning map um, to kind of go through and say, these are the village areas, these are the neighborhood areas. And these are the rural residential, these are the agriculture, these are the forest conservation, these are in, in towns would kind of lay lay out their plan that way, avoiding the zoning designation. So some would, like I said, some would just grab a zoning map and just adopt that as their land use map. And others would kind of, you know, um, like we have Res 1500, Res 3000, Res 6000, you know, we might just go through and say, you know, these are the urban core. Um, mixed use district neighborhoods, you know, maybe high density neighborhoods and low density neighborhoods. We want to avoid density. We'd probably just say neighborhoods. And then we'd probably have the rural area. Um, and, you know, then we have some designation for those commercial like uh, Route 302 in those areas. So I think we would probably have just a generalized map that kind of groups some of our, our zoning districts into larger entities would probably be how I would see us doing it. Um, that's just a suggestion. We can have conversations about how detailed we want to make it or how general we want to make it when we get to it. I'm just trying to wrap up the last. So uh, as I mentioned, public safety chapter is written. The only chapter I have left to write uh, is, so we have the second half of the implementation strategies for us to approve, I think. Did we do them all last time? No, we did the first half last time. Um, and now we have the second half of those implementation strategies to approve. 
and to write the community services chapter. After that, all the chapters, all the implementation strategies have been written, except for land use. Um, so that puts us in a pretty good place, I think. And that's what I'm trying to focus on right now is getting that last implementation, uh, it's the last chapter written for community services. Um, and so that's what that's what I'm focusing on right now, getting getting through that, and then we'll get to land use later. And that's it. That sounds great. That sounds really great. That really close to the finish line. Okay. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the March 27 minutes? Do people still need a minute to look at that? Take a motion whenever, whenever you're ready. I'm, I'll move to approve the minutes. Okay, motion from Ariane. We have a second. I'll, I'll second that. Okay, we have a second from Brian. Does anybody need more time? Okay. Uh, those in favor of approving March 27 minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Minutes approved. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna float something out there, even though I mess I passed my opportunity at the beginning about with the comments from the chair thing. But um, we've talked about like outreach and stuff, and I had one idea. I'm wondering, just, just wanting to see if what feedback would be for this. Um, when it comes to when it comes time for the hearings for the city plan. What if we plan to, before we do the official, like, legally required hearings, which have a certain process to them that's required, what if we also posted, advertised a, something that's like a community conversation about the city plan with the planning commission, where we actually just walk through and talk about our process, because that's not what we do with those hearings. If before we actually have those those formal hearings, if we actually had a meeting where we just talked about our process, like this came from other like city committees, and then we did this, um, you know, this is how we put it all together, and like this is what the different terminology means that's in the plan, like this is what an aspiration is and a goal and a strategy, um, and then have people ask questions at that informally, but but meant to be more like a conversation thing. Uh, it may still turn into like angry people showing up, but um, yeah. what are your thoughts, Brian? Yeah, yeah, you're an expert in this stuff. No, I'm not, no, well, not an expert in Montpelier, but my cynical side of me says, although well-meaning, it could be hijacked by the angry, uh, crazy, uh, you know, well-meaning, crazy people. But I, I think that it'd be better to do as like, you had talked about, like you could do it as a series of short videos that, you know, like, here's our thought process. Here's the format. Here's, you know, here's what an aspiration is. Here's what a goal is. And here's how we approached it. And that way, um, not to hide from the public at all, but, but I don't know. Um, and I don't want to be too cynical about how productive, but I, I can tell you that in my world, I would never do what's called a town hall meeting because <laughs> when it's not the town hall because then you don't have control of it at least with a public hearing you're able to call somebody well you know it, you don't lose you hopefully don't lose control of the room so i i just i hate to think worst case like like you said it's mm -hmm. just taken over and then our process is lost in uh the mayhem of the loudest voices so i i, I will be cynical of, and i agree with brian well, you you are the wrong guy. It's too, the wound is a little too fresh for you. I don't know if you. Well, you what? got there. I'm, you got there. I am. Got there. I'm not allowed to say that. No, you absolutely are. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> what if? What if they don't? What I don't know. What if we don't call it community conversation? What if we call it a presentation on our thought process and we don't get let them talk? Is it? Is it a? If it's not a sanctioned town meeting, then we don't have any. 
you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if it would be a, a an official noticed town meeting or anything like that. I mean, the, anything if, unofficial, mm -hmm. you know, we don't, we, I, I, I don't know. We yeah. kind of uh, lose control of the, if we lose control of the room, we've lost control. I mean, I, I, I mean, I guess, I guess we go, we go home if the pitch force come out, I suppose. I guess, but I mean, then, then, then it's like, then it's a loss, you know? Yeah. Let's, um, let's, I mean, I wasn't, yeah. I, so, so. I mean, I'm I mean, sorry. I don't mean to try. Maria had a I thought. Like, Maria, Maria, has, Maria had a thought. Go ahead, Maria. So I was just thinking of, instead of having some type of like town hall or presentation, like what if it was just called like a launch party? You know, um, and at the, so at our studio, we have, I think Ariane has been to all, all of them. Um, we have like artist showcase where people just come in and there's the art is there. And we have these casual conversations one on one with people to explain where, like, where this all came from. Like, what was the purpose behind all of this? Like, let's describe, like, what was the thought process behind the stool challenge? Here are the children's stools, you know? And so it's kind of, it's very, casual so you're not going to have a pitchfork mob <laughs> because you're just having these one-on-one -on -one conversations and like telling people what the process was as opposed to giving this like powerpoint about like and then we did this and then right. for the next three months we did why like i mean yeah it, an open it can bring house. them into yeah. our perspective on what this is and what we wanted to accomplish with it without it being like this group uh mentality well, you know like people yeah. are separate as they talk to yeah. you about all the well, things. absolutely like the open house format is way better than the town hall format the, the issue with uh, the issue with open house format is staffing so you, i guess you, then you would have people at each you I, you know you'd have 12 stations let's say and you'd have people at each station they would come by that way you don't have critical mass of like you said the mob mentality the issue is is staffing and then do you need an expert at each do we need mike at each kiosk uh to do it so i there's always a risk i i would i would i would respectfully submit that the the environment for your your launch party is is you know a, a safer space than perhaps what would turn up at a public meeting about and maybe I'm being too cynical, but I mean, there, there is been a lot of conversation on in these meetings about how delicately we have to tread. We just had one about, we don't want to put anything controversial in like a summary. So, and we know the, the lay of the land. I, I mean, again, video, you have complete control of your message and it's very accessible. Okay. And Mike, you've been through this a couple of times. What, what have you seen in other successful rollouts? Yeah, I think I think you need to and want to have the public input. And we I think the important thing, I think the education piece, whether it's for council or whether it's for you guys, is that you don't have to react and respond to every to every voice that's there. You don't you know, we've already tried to develop a plan by committee, you know, and that's that's hard enough. We don't need 8000 to try to accommodate 8000 people. At a certain point, we're going to put this out to get public input, and we're going to hear no's, and we're going to hear a lot of negatives. But the question is going to be: Do we change it in light of some negative input that we fee that we hear? Because there's going to be some positive some positive comments that are made as well. And usually, you're going to hear a hundred percent of the negative comments, and you're going to hear, you know, maybe ten percent of the positive ones. Because if people support it, they don't always come out and say so. Um, but I think, you know, my vision is, you know, a little bit like Maria's idea and um, maybe a little bit like Brian's where, you know, we may break this plane into a couple of sections. So let's say the, the first time we've got five, five kiosks, we, we have a meeting, we, we call it to order. It's a planning commission meeting. It's not the hearing yet. This is the meeting. We want public input. We want to hear from you what you like, what you don't like. This is how the plan was developed. This is how it's laid out. These are some of the key definitions. And now we're going to break for um, an hour and you guys have five stations or six stations. And we're going to have the first ones on the, the historic page. And the second one is on the economic development. The third one's on housing and the fourth one's on this and the fifth one's on this. Um, and we want you to go to each one and, and there's going to be somebody there who's going to guide you through it. And we'll have, you know, a laptop with, 
some we'll get computer screens and we'll put the computer screens up and we'll go through it and we'll describe it for people. We'll give people little cards that gives them links um, or QR codes that'll take them directly to these pages so they can view them. Um, and then after the hour, we bring everybody back. And we have comments. What did you like about it? Did you like the format? Um, are there specific things you liked or didn't like about it? Um, what about the implementation strategies? Did that make sense to you? Um, you know, because we really we've got the the chapters, and then we've got the implementation strategies. So it's going to be a lot for people to take in, but I think for the most part, people are going to be looking at it at a surface. And for the people, and I can probably name the names of the people who are going to be, you know, uh, whatever. You say, look, here's the QR code. Look at look at it and get back to us with the with you know. If there are some specific things I don't like, this strategy, this one here, you've labeled this as a medium priority. That's not a medium priority. That's all we've talked about for seven years, and we're going to get 25 minutes on why that medium priority should be a high priority. Great. Um, we can we can take all that but i think in the public meeting we want to give people that the big picture of this is what it is this is where we're going this is how you can navigate this and then you know maybe have some computers that are there for people who want to just go through on their own you know we've got the stations and we've got some individual computers that the city has laptops we can just pull them in plug them in get people to to review it and i think we could do this in two groups you know the first section of you know, the landing page in the first five chapters and then the second five, uh, second six chapters, because there's actually 11 chapters, I think. So we'll go. Through. I like that. And then and then there's like the city council has a whole nother. There's a whole nother set of hearings that go along with city council. Right. And this would yeah. be the public meetings, because when yeah. we were in the public hearings, then we're going to do it all over again. Then we're going to tell people, look, you've already had the opportunity the first time around to go and look at them. You've got a second time to look at them. We now have to have a public hearing where the planning commission hears official public comments. Then we'll probably hear from some folks that says, I told you to make this change and you didn't do it. That's fine. We discussed it. Um, and for people who've been here, Kirby, John, um, who've been through some of the zoning changes, we'll propose zoning changes and hear from folks who don't like the proposal. And then we just make a vote and says, yeah, we're going to still go forward with it. Uh, we know we heard a lot of people who don't want us to change the zoning on Northfield Street. Planning Commission still believes this is in the best interest of the city for us to change the zoning in Northfield Street. We vote to make the change. And we move forward. And I think there's going to be a lot of that with the city plan. And again, with a big city plan, the hope is that we very quickly crush ourselves down to everybody is talking about two chapters. Nine of them are done. <laughs> now we're down to talking about a debating these two chapters, are we doing enough in housing and are we doing enough in community services or whatever the two chapters are? I won't know ahead of time which are the ones we're going to get beat up on, but there'll probably be one or two that are going to take more time than than the others. The others are just going to fly right through and we're going to be done. Yeah, it's um, good to get the, I mean, I've been pitchforked a lot and, and it's good to just get them out of the way and or not get them out of the way but it does seem like you know folks come and, and we have a good chair like Kirby it can be managed in a constructive way and oftentimes there are little bits that are are helpful and we can incorporate some of those and beyond that when when it comes time for when those those folks come to city council and repeat that, you know, we can say, we've heard that, we considered it, and this is why we didn't, you know, adopt that change. So as much as it's, it'd be nice to just, just like steamroll through some of those things, it is something that we have to go through. I also wonder, you know, I think zoning is different than plan zoning tend to bring out more folks in terms of folks that are zeroed in on very specific things and um and the climate maybe has also changed in terms of the housing needs compared to where they were you know a few years ago and there is a lot more at least in, in i guess 
we'll find out. But I think there's a lot of support for um, taking measures to increase the housing supply. So, you know, I brought it up to, um, to, to get us thinking about it. It sounds like lots of thoughts there. Didn't, didn't know Mike actually had such a detailed plan in mind. So, um, what I was saying was actually kind of in line with kind of what you described, Mike. So that sounds wonderful that if we're going to do these meetings, like you were saying, um, so it sounds like, like the meetings are a plan and just want to throw it out there for other people to brainstorm too about, um, how to approach it. Um, I also want to say that I brought it up because doing just the hearings, I feel like is like our bare legal minimum and people don't always feel heard. And I'd like for people to feel heard going into this. I think in the long run, it will help us because people will, will maybe not have so much vitriol if they feel heard going into it. And also, um, it's also, you know, a good thing to do. So, um, that's kind of where I was coming from, but. Yeah, and the number the last thing I'll throw in on that is the number one thing that you'll hear from city council is that if there if it's perceived that there wasn't enough input, then that's they'll they will vote things down. The the design some of the design review things that got voted down and some of the density pieces that got voted down were really voted down because they felt that this hadn't been taken to the public and addressed well enough with them. And so in some cases, I think council agreed with planning commission on what was being proposed, but just didn't feel that it had been properly gone out. And I've we've gotten beat beaten up, and it's been a a, a thing somewhat. We you know we go above and beyond in a lot of our public hearing notices, and then it still is like, well, you know, but you didn't you didn't hand deliver notices to you know. You know, we mailed like literally with the design review rules, we mailed copies of the design review rules to every property owner in the design review district. And they said, yeah, but what about the renters? The renters didn't get them. And so it's like, yes, if you're a renter in a building that's in the historic district, you didn't get a copy. The landlord got the copy. And then it's like, well, do we need to just redo this whole process all over again? Because renters should have gotten a hand delivered copy. Like, well, we put a notice of it in the in the bridge every part every everyone who has a mailbox gets a copy of the bridge and we put a description in the bridge so i don't know how much more we can do to help get people involved but it it, it is a thing so um you know there's certainly nothing coming out of the planning office that will be trying to steamroll the public process because i'll be the one who's going to sit in hot seat um from council and, and explain why we didn't maximize the opportunities for the public to get involved so um and it's just like i said most of it is uh, uh listening and taking uh listening to the public and being able to go through and say um you know asking them questions if they have a negative thing it's like well thank you for your input we appreciate your comment we'll talk about it later um do you have more suggestions do you have a do you have a suggestion for a different way of doing this and trying to kind of pull out some stuff so that way we've got away. And if ultimately it's like, you know, this is, this is somebody who's being a NIMBY and he doesn't want to change or she doesn't want to change. There's, it's just, you know, thank them for their input um, and um, decide whether or not it's, it's a change that we want to make or not. And there's no obligation. We don't have to argue with them. We don't have to debate with them. We don't have to convince them that that, that they're wrong or that they're doing it's just this is their opportunity to, to provide input we take their input and occasionally we've had to back off um you know i think john has been there when we've had you know a room with 65 people saying there's no effing way you guys are going to move this forward and we kind of all know this this proposal isn't going anywhere <laughs> it's it's toast as much as we like it um and so we've withdrawn some app, some projects just for that reason. Um, but hopefully we're constructive. We hear good things and we can vote to make changes, move it forward. And this doesn't have to languish for, you know, 18 months of public hearings. Yeah. Let's be optimistic. I don't think, I don't think it's going to be one of those. We'll find out. Um, all right. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I moved. Motion from John. We second. Um, I second. 
Second from Gabe. All right. We are adjourned. Everybody have a great night. Um, and see you in two weeks.